Good morning. It is good to see each of you gathered here on this beautiful Sunday morning. Uh, if you are here on vacation, you may think I've lost my mind, but if you're homegrown, you know we need this rain. So it is a, a beautiful day to be gathered in God's presence uh, here this morning. Several announcements before we begin worship. Make sure you have one of the communion elements. Uh, if you did not Get one when you came in the door. If you'll raise your hand, we have folks back here with, with baskets full. There are a couple over here um, that they'll be glad to, to make sure you have what you need for our service. Our board of trustees will meet at 6.30 on Thursday evening. So those of you who have responsibilities in this area are reminded of that meeting. Um, our annual conference of the United Methodist Church, the South Carolina Conference, begins today. It will be virtual once again. Clergy session begins at 2 this afternoon. Uh, the service of ordination and recognition of retirees is this evening. The business section will be pretty much all day tomorrow. Most of, most of it begins around 2. Um, and continues through the, the service, the memorial service, at 7 o'clock tomorrow evening. If you are interested in any of this or all of this, you can go to the annual conference website, umcsc.org, uh, and everything will be live streamed. You can see copies of all of the reports, anything that's going on uh, is right there. I know most people are... are not interested at all, but there are some who are very interested, and if you are, that's where you can find everything that you need. Reminder that next Sunday is Pastor Laura's last Sunday here with us, so I know that you'll want to be here next week. Uh, celebration doesn't sound like the right word to use. Uh, but as we worship together and, and express our gratitude and celebrate her six years of ministry among us at Surfside Church, and following worship from four to six, there will be a drive-by um, farewell parade out under the portico. Days like this are what porticos were made for. Uh, decorate your car come by to, to wish her and her family well uh, next Sunday afternoon. At this time, let us prepare our hearts for worship. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Make sure I have, 
I've been testing a mic in another room, so let me make sure this one is on. There we go. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Please stand and join me as you are able in the call to worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us, Let us rejoice and be glad in it. This is a day of new beginnings. This, this is the time for growing into new disciples for Jesus. Come, let us prepare ourselves for worship. Let us be prepared for service to God. Amen. Let us remain standing as we pray. Lord, we come this day having seen the miracles of everyday creation in our world. We have enjoyed both the bright sunshine and the gentle rains. We have marveled over the beauty of the flowers and the complexity of your creation. Make our hearts ready to receive your word for us, that we may go forth from this place ready to joyfully serve you all our days. Amen. And now let's join in singing our opening hymn of Worship the King. morning we begin reading from the book of 2 Corinthians and we'll spend several weeks in this book and then we'll move to the book of Ephesians. This morning we turn to the fourth chapter of 2 Corinthians and we read the 13th through the first verse of the fifth chapter. But just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with scripture I believed and so I spoke, we also believe 
And so we speak because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also with Jesus and will bring us with you into his presence. Yes, everything is for your sake so that grace as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for an eternal weight of glory beyond all measure because we look not at what can be seen but at what cannot be seen for that for what can be seen is temporary but what cannot be seen is eternal for we know that if the earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. This is the word of God for us, the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I-M-H-O. Some of you might recognize that acronym it's used when people are posting things on social media or texting about something I M H O in my humble opinion I always have to say humble you don't want to be proud you're even though your opinions are right correct but in my humble opinion these are some of the strongest and most encouraging words in all of Scripture. They remind us of, of the constancy of, of God's loving care throughout our lives and for all eternity. Now Paul is, is writing about the 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 inherent nature of what it means to be mortal what it means to be to be human and we we feel the weight of that some days all of us on days like today yeah I can feel every joint in my body anybody else maybe maybe it's your knee maybe it's your hip whatever it is it reminds us, reminds us that we are mortal and our bodies do what mortal bodies do. In fact, these verses build on the ones preceding. When you hear a, a, a verse start with but, that means it's, it's referring back to the verses just before it where Paul writes these words. But we have this treasure in clay jars. You might have heard it say earthen vessels, clay jars, so that it may be made clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. And then he gives, I, I, I like to think of it as the equivalent of a halftime pep talk by a good coach. You know, we're, we may be down a few points, but, but we're going to come back. When Paul says, we are afflicted in every way, but not crushed. Perplexed, but not driven to despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Struck down, but not destroyed. Always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so that the life of Jesus may be made visible in our bodies. Yeah. It, 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 it is a pep talk. Yeah? We are, we're mortal, we're human, we have these frailties, but God continues to do a good work in us. God continues 
to renew us so that, that no matter what our physical condition, our spiritual condition is being renewed day by day by day. This is, this is simply the truth. And it allows us to be, to be free and to be human the way God created us to be. We're reminded once a year on Ash Wednesday, from dust we came and to dust we shall return. And then he, he draws an analogy here. He draws an analogy to a, a piece of, of pottery. It's useful, but because of the nature of pottery, it's, it's subject to, to cracks and, and to chips and is likely to contain imperfections. Earthen vessels have little reason to boast. The most appropriate stance then is a humble attitude. A humble attitude of, of gratitude for the purpose of serving a divine function while here on earth. To be part of that eternal grand scheme of things. Now we're not likely to turn on the TV this afternoon. It, it's rainy. There's probably a baseball game on somewhere. You turn it on and before you go to sleep, you're listening to the commercials and you're not likely to hear a message like this. They're going to try to sell you something to tell you, oh, you may be aging, that outward stuff, but we can fix it. If you just buy this, we can make it all better. There's a frustration in our culture with anything that's less than perfection. There's a family that was involved in church. They were there every time the doors were open. The kids were involved in all of the youth and children's activities. The parents were on, on every committee and, and they were always there. They were always active until one day somebody noticed they hadn't been there in a while. And so when they were, were contacted and, and asked what's going on, they said, well, we started going to another church. And when they were asked why, they said, well, our son was having a lot of trouble. We were worried. We were, we were sad. But every time we came to church, people would say, how are you? And we would always say, oh, we're doing great, thank you. You know, you put on your church smile. Everything's good. We're doing great. Thank you. And they said, it's as if great is what was expected. We needed a place where we could be more real about what was imperfect and wrong in our very human family. I don't know where people got the idea that being human is about being perfect. And I really don't understand how this notion of being perfect got wrapped up in what it means to be Christian. This kind of thinking is, is destructive to the human spirit and to, to human community. It makes us feel like if, if we don't have our act completely together, we can't be loved by God or accepted by anybody else. Mortals, by definition, are imperfect and limited. Now, I'm not saying that it's, it's easy to accept the temporary, momentary afflictions. Paul knew that well. 
If you've read lots of Paul's writings, you know that he struggles with this. He's honest about about who he is and and what's going on with him. And and he knows that just because I accept it doesn't mean life is going to get easier. In fact, sometimes it seems to get just the opposite. What Paul is telling us is that we're going to make it. It's what that pep talk was all about. It wasn't just just words to get us motivated for another win and a perfect season. It was a word of encouragement. We've been through difficult days this past year, but we are going to make it. We're going to make it together. There's a big difference between being beleaguered That's Paul's SAT word of the day. Being beleaguered and being done in. A huge difference. Thanks to the grace of God. What it means is is that if we're true to ourselves and, and we're true to God, our lives the troubles of our lives will not get the best of us. According to Paul, this this resilient kind of strength is made available to us by the mysterious power that's been unleashed by Jesus' death and the pouring out of his blood and the breaking of his body. For we know, Paul writes, that if this earthly tent we live in is destroyed, we have a building from God, a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. I've been here almost a year now. I'm starting to learn some of your stories. And I look out in this congregation and I know I know that there there are those of you sitting here who know exactly what this means. Exactly what this means because you've been there and you're here today. Have you ever broken a favorite piece of pottery? Yeah, I see some nods. Mm -hmm. Have you ever broken somebody else's favorite piece of pottery? No, that's a different story, right? So what you you do is is you you pick up the pieces and see if you can put it back together. Maybe get out the super glue and you, you, you put it together real tight and then wipe away the residue, make sure there are no... And so it's perfect. It looks brand new, just like it was in the beginning, and and you can use it again, and and you just keep going on like nothing had ever happened. In Japanese culture, there's a process known as kintsuji. And when a, a valuable piece breaks, they don't try to hide that imperfection. In fact, they use a kind of of lacquer that's mixed with gold dust. And the broken pieces are put back together using this gold dust. And so instead of hiding the imperfection, it highlights it. This, this is where this piece was broken. And quite often the result of that, 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 that gold streak running through it makes it more beautiful, more valuable, more precious than it was to begin with. This. This is what the grace of God does in us by the power of the Holy Spirit. Those places in us that have been cracked or chipped or damaged or broken by the circumstances of life have been made whole together. 
They've been, been put together by the, the beauty of God's love and grace and mercy. And so instead of hiding those places in our lives, we can highlight those places where the grace of God has touched us and mended us and healed us and made us whole. And sometimes those places are even stronger than they were to begin with. Sometimes we become even more beautiful and precious than we were had this event not occurred. And we carry with us this treasure of God's grace. We who are earthly tents, we who are clay vessels made ready for use by God as we witness to God's power in our lives. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This time of offering, we prepare to, to give of our, our resources, uh, maybe putting an offering in the box as you come in, maybe getting ready to do that as you leave, maybe you're doing that online if you're worshiping with us that way this morning. But we also offer ourselves in new ways. As we prepare to come to the table, if you're worshiping with us at home, this would be a good time for you to, to get your bread and your juice so you can participate in the service as well. I want you to consider those places in your life where you have been chipped or broken and put back together by the grace of God and offer that to God as a gift this day as well.
you're at home and joining us, it's time to get your bread and juice. If you're here, you get out your little cup. And our <coughs> liturgy begins on page 12. It will also be up on the screen. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, all who earnestly repent of their sin and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sin before God and one another. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be a obedient church. We, we have, have not done your will. We, we have broken your law. We have, have rebelled against your love. love. We have we not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of need. Forgive, forgive us, we pray. pray. Free us for joyful obedience. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Hear the good news. Christ died for us while we were yet sinners. That proves God's love toward us. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. And in the name, name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven. Glory to God. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, 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 holy God, God of power and might, Heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you and blessed is your son Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, he gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. On the night in which he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which has been given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world. Until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with your, the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. And now, with the confidence of children of God, let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass. 
us against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Because there is one love, we who are many are one body. The bread which we share is the breaking of the body of Christ. The cup which we share is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Take your little cups. And if you will peel back, peel back just the film, get it to the wafer. The body of Christ, broken for you. If you feel back, would peel back the foil, the blood of Christ shed for you. Thanks be to God. Please join me in the prayer following communion. Eternal God, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself to us. Grant that we may go into the world in the strength of your Spirit to give ourselves for others. In the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now I will stand, please, and join me in the singing of our closing hymn, Come Thou Font of Every Blessing. to wander, Lord, I feel it. Sometimes we wander. That takes us to places where our lives get, get chipped and cracked and sometimes broken. But by the grace of God, we are made strong and are being renewed day by day. As you go forth from this place this day, remember that you do not go alone, but that God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit go with you 
and remain with you now and forever. Amen.